Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 hey guys, hey guys, welcome back. Um, <laughs> okay, oh, we're still flying, good, that's the start. Um, okay, so that is that long leg of the journey over Wales done. Um, looks like, yeah, the uh, the cloudy south of England has given way to a nice hazy west coast. Um, so just to recap of the flight so far, so we took off from Bournemouth on the south coast of England, we flew up to uh, Bristol using uh, the automatic direction finder, tuning into the Bristol NDB, and then we've just flown north over Wales, and uh, we're just running up to the Wallasey VOR just now, um, so we're pretty much tracking the VOR perfectly at the moment, we're at 0.3 nautical miles, out from the VOR, so we should be doing our turn up towards Blackpool, which is up over here uh, very soon. So the Wallasey VOR is quite close to Liverpool, so I believe that is Liverpool Airport right there, so we're just a, a few few miles away from it really. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, as we turn over uh, Wallasey, my next kind of planned move is to um, to fly an outbound radial from Wallasey of 010 degrees and that should take us up towards Blackpool. Once we pass over Wallasey, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune into the Isle of Man uh, VOR onto our NAV2 radio and hopefully we should be able to pick that up straight away and uh, what we'll look to do is to intercept the 290 radial inbound to the Isle of Man. So the Outbound from Wallasey and the inbound to uh, Isle of Man should cross over pretty much directly over Blackpool up here, so um, we should be making that move any moment now. Uh, as for the plane itself, everything is pretty much as it was. We're still uh, puckering along at 22,000 revs on the speeds, engine temperatures and pressures are all good. Uh, fuel has come down to about half capacity now. So um, everything is performing as expected. Still cruising at 8,000 feet as well. Everything, everything is all good there. So next kind of um, expected event in the cockpit, shall we say, is to see the VOR needle either swing left or right if we get as we get closer to the Wallasey VOR, and then we should see the um, the two flag here disappear as we pass directly over the VOR. Because di di being directly above a VOR, you actually don't get a radio signal, so the flag should, um, so the signal should go dead for a short while. Um, it'll only be like literally a few seconds, and then uh, we should get the away flag showing up there, and that's when we know we have passed over the top of it. <coughs> Excuse me. So just waiting for that to happen just now. So about 1.5 nautical miles out now. So um, yeah, we should. Um, should pass over at any moment now. So yeah, so what we're going to do now is sort of fly up in this general direction. Uh, you can see that the plane is starting to turn, so it's struggling to hold on to the VOR signal now, I think. So I'm going to get the plane to follow the heading at the moment. And if we have a look at the VOR indicator here, you can see it's gone dead. So that's us kind of passing over the top of Wallasey just now. So I kept the thing holding on to onto the nav. If I kept the thing trying navigation, it would just keep turning left and right as it was trying to follow that signal there. So you can see now that we've got the away flag, the arrows pointing down, and the needle starting to swing slightly. So what we'll do is we'll turn this round to a radial of was that 010 sorry and then what we'll do is we'll turn the plane over to a heading of 010 as well and because we're so close to the VOR station the needle is going to be deflected quite far but as we fly away from it the needle should you can see it there happening just now it's coming back to centre so that's all working as expected we're now pointing up towards Blackpool um, so the next step would be to tune in the Isle of Man VOR, so I'm going to do that on the second VOR indicator here, and we'll also get the radio tuned in. So the frequency for the Isle of Man is 112.2, so I've got that still dialed in from a previous flight. So what I'm going to do is make that the active on the second uh, navigation radio, 
I'm going to bring the sound back so we can listen out for the um, for the Morse code there. So hold your ears. There we go, and that was definitely the Isle of Man there. So um, you can see I've already actually got the uh, the uh, sort of the radio dialed in from from a previous sort of test flight. So um, what we're wait waiting to happen, or what we're looking for now, is for this needle to centre up, and then once that centres up, we'll turn over to a heading of uh, two nine zero. And because the autopilot, I think, only works with the Nav One radio. Uh, we're going to have to kind of manually sort of keep uh, keep the plane on track for this uh, for this leg of the journey, which shouldn't take too much effort. There should be quite a straightforward flight there. So um, yeah, it's going to take a few minutes to get up to Blackpool. So I'm going to just cut the video here just to save time, and then uh, we'll come back to it once we're heading over Blackpool and when we um, intercept the next leg of the journey. Okay, so if you have a look now at our VOR2 indicator, you can see that we're getting pretty close to that intercept now. Um, and actually if you have a look out the window, that's actually uh, Blackpool Airport down there. So it's pretty much happening almost exactly where we wanted it to. Um, I didn't do um, a good job following the outbound radio from uh, from Wallasey. It's not a big deal because we had um, sort of good visual conditions and we knew where sort of where we w the general direction we wanted to go so um, it's not a massive deal. Um, we knew we wanted to head towards Blackpool and, and there it is so um, so I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna lose sleep over over that there. So we're just waiting for that needle just to centre up just a tiny bit more and then what we'll do is we'll make our left turn. So it's going to be almost a 90 degree turn to the left, an 80 degree turn. And do is I'll keep the autopilot stuck with the uh, the heading on the heading hold rather than trying to nav. Because as I said, trying to use the navigation radio. Because as I said, um, I think it only locks into nav the nav one radio, not the nav two. Okay, so needles pretty much centering up now. So we'll begin our turn. So that's two nine zero there, and then obviously as we progress along this kind of leg of the journey, I'll need to maybe, you know, correct for for a little bit of wind here and there. But I think it's quite a calm day. I think the the there's no more than maybe five knots of wind, certainly at the ground level. So I'm not expecting any any major dramas up in the air. So uh, yeah, this would be the kind of considered a kind of a dangerous part of the leg because we're flying out over open water and we're not going to be close to land any for a little while. Um, normally on a good clear day you can see the Isle of Man, but unfortunately because it's quite hazy you can't see it just now, but it is out there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to follow this VOR um, which kind of takes us over the south or the southern edge of the island. And then once we pass over that, we'll continue on towards Belfast, pretty much, which is, which is almost in a complete straight line from here on and out. But um, we'll make a slight adjustment as we head over the Isle of Man. Anyway, so I'm going to skip the video again just to save you guys some time, and uh, I will see you once we reach the Isle of Man. Okay, so here we are passing by the Isle of Man just now. Um, and if we have a look, we're still tracking it almost perfectly on the uh, VOR2 indicator there. So everything is going well so far. Uh, just having a look at the fuel gauges there, we seem to have maybe a slight imbalance. Uh, but it's nothing too drastic and nothing to worry about at the moment. So uh, I'm happy just to continue with the flight as things are. Um, so what I'm going to do is as we start getting a bit closer to... 
the uh, the VOR. We're going to expect to see sort of the VOR go dead again. So we'll have like a little flag here, which in indicates there's no signal, and then um, we should get the away flag as we pass over the top there. Um, as we wait for that to happen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune into the Belfast VOR. So that's on a frequency of 117.2, which I've already dialed in here. So I'm going to switch that to the active. You can see we've got some movement on our VOR indicator here. So I'm going to tune in or listen in just now on the NAV1 radio just to make sure that we are tuned into the correct VOR. So uh, I'm going to bring back back and we'll listen out for that. And that was Belfast there. Perfect. So everything is looking good at the moment. Um, so the radio that we wanted to intercept for Belfast was... Oh gosh, what was it? I think it was 310. So turn that over just now. 310. The one thing I didn't make a note of, um, what was it? I think it was 310. You can see that's pretty much in line with um, with our current kind of flight path there. So, um, so yeah, so we'll go with that. Um, you can see the needle on the VOR2 indicator now is starting to swing. Um, just as we're coming out over the south, or the southern tip of the island where the VOR station is actually located. So. Um, I think that needle swing is just because we're we're getting close to it now. Unfortunately, it's not coming up in the DME, um, but we'll just keep an eye on that. Expecting the flag to go dead any second now. Then again, if I'm passing too far away from it then it won't happen but yeah it's gone dead now perfect and then in a couple of seconds we should have the uh, away flag or the um, the down arrow showing which shows that we're now moving away from it perfect so we're seeing as we're pretty much online already with the Belfast VOR on a radio of 310 inbound to the VOR station uh, I'm going to simply turn to that now so turn over there and what I'll also do is also flick the uh, the plane back onto nav mode so that it follows the uh, radio signal all the way in so it's now on nav mode down there and um, yeah, everything is looking good now. So we're on our sort of final leg in towards Belfast. Um, so let's bring back my little pop side here. Here. So as we get over this sort of the mainland, you could maybe if just about if the video renders properly, you should just about be able to start to see the uh, mainland of Northern Ireland there. So as we get over Northern Ireland and the um, the sort of the city of Belfast. We'll, what we'll do is we'll begin our descent. Uh, we've actually got a plan plan ahead. Let me think. So if we're so going to descend down to about one thousand feet, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to enter the sort of a standard pattern and then land at Belfast. So I need to be about a thousand feet. So I need to lose seven thousand feet. And so if we descend at five hundred feet per minute. That means two minutes per 1,000 feet, so that'll be 14 minutes to descend. So once we get to uh, about 15, 14, 15 minutes away on the DME, what I'll do is I'll start a descent at 500 feet, and then that should bring us, we should kind of finish that descent at 1,000 feet pretty much just as we, um, just as we get to the airport. And then we can enter the pattern from there 
and land as if we were doing a, a normal landing from a pattern. So that will be the next kind of main event, will be the start of that descent. So I'll skip the video again, um, save you guys the, uh, the trouble of seeing me fly, cruising along doing nothing. And um, and then things will start to get interesting again, hopefully. <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll see you there. Okay, so we're just coming up towards Belfast just now. Uh, we're about 31 nautical miles away from the airport, about 18 minutes flying time. Um, and as you can see, the weather is kind of closed in again. So um, yeah, we're just coming over the the coast now. As you have a, have a look there. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by tuning into the Belfast ATIS to listen into the weather report just to make sure that it is still going to be safe to land there. Uh, I think it is, it should be, but it um, doesn't hurt just to make sure. So the ATIS frequency is 128.2, so I'm just going to dial that in nine. Dial it in now, rather. Uh, 1282. So listen to into that, and then we should get that across the uh, the top of the screen there. Oh, I wonder because I think the um, ah there we go. Now it's coming across there. So winds calm. That's a good start. Visibility is good. So clouds at two thousand eight hundred. Q and H one zero two one. Two five. Okay, so I'm just going to make a quick note of the uh, airport details here. Okay, so um, some main details I'm making a note of there are the the cloud ceiling, which is. 2008. If we get get below that, it should be fine. Uh, the visibility there is good, so um, not expecting any issues. Um, the altitude there, or the the sorry, the air pressure there is 1021. So I'm going to adjust my altimeter just now. Uh, 1021, and I'm going to have to amend that for the uh, pilot as well. Uh, so we're 15 minutes out. So um, what we're going to do is reduce the throttle and then start a descent down to 1000 feet. Come on, do it. And then what I'll do is once. Uh, Why aren't you working? What is this? There we go. Minus 500. I have to do minus 600 now because we're. No, I'll do minus 500 feet per minute. So we just need to make sure that we um, we don't speed up as we start to descend. So. Just bring the power back a bit more, just to kind of maintain our ground speed there. Okay, uh, just having a look at the um, the checklist on the side here. Mixture. Once we get below three thousand feet, I'll mixture in to to fully rich. That just gives us the best amount of power for sort of low level flying. Um, Let's see, what else do we need to check? Fuel selector valve is set to both. Uh, I'm still happy with the fuel situation. I mean, there's a, a very slight imbalance, but um, it's not going to cause any major problems as we fly. And um, apart from that, yeah, we're still tracking the VOR pretty well, so I'm happy with everything. Um, so we're just going to descend in towards Belfast now, and um, hopefully we should make a safe landing. So um, the other thing that the ATIS report told us was we would be landing on runway 25. So we'll be landing, heading towards the west. So it might 
be worth doing a straight in landing. We might be told to kind of maybe turn on to base. I'm not sure what um, air traffic control are going to tell us to do. Um, speaking of air traffic control, what I'll do is I'll get the tower frequency dialed in just now, just so we're ready to speak to them when we get a bit closer. So the frequency there is 118.3. So once we get to within about maybe 10 nautical miles, um, I'll speak to them and make sure that we uh, we are clear to land. Although I think I saw in the weather report that they were flying under IFR conditions, so I might have to kind of be a bit naughty and land without permission. But we'll see. We'll see when we get there. So we're descending nicely. And also, once we get down to 1,000 feet, I can also um, turn the pitot heat off as well, just thinking because we'll be below, or we'll be above, sort of freezing and below the clouds. So um, I can take care of that before landing as well. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just skip ahead just to save a bit of time and. Um, Hopefully the next view should be us quite close to the airport. Okay, so we just crossed the uh, the sort of ten mile kind of uh, radius there, and you can see this kind of pale patch just open in front of us. This is uh, Belfast Airport, so it looks like we've got here safe and sound. So what we're going to do is just call the tower. We want to land, and um, hopefully we should be able to just land. Um, let's see, so it was 118.3, so we'll make that the active, okay, and the uh, ATC is going to be a bit funny, so all the groove, so full stop landing is what we want. Okay, so they want us to enter left base, so pretty much just, yeah, this end of the runway that we're going to land on here, so, uh, let's see, 2-5 would be there, so, what's 25T, that would be 3-4-0, I believe, so, what we'll do is bring ourselves back onto heading and turn it over to 3-4-0. And then that should put us onto a uh, base leg for runway 25 at Belfast. So, um, preparations for landing. I haven't really done much at the moment. We're still descending. The only thing I've really done is um, put the fuel mixture to rich. So we've got the power if we need it. Um, because we're coming in for landing now, um, it would be wise to switch on the landing lights and the taxi lights down there. Uh, because we're back in warmer temperatures now um, and we're underneath the clouds, I'm going to uh, switch off the pitot heat. Um, yeah, just so it's one less thing to worry about after we land. So yeah, we've just got about a thousand feet to go now. I think actually what I'm going to do, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the autopilot now. Okay, so it's to land. So, okay, so I need to uh, pay attention now. So, um, let me see. So I'm just going to reduce, start reducing the speed. And I'm going to level off a little bit as well because we're going to be um, turning on to final a bit further away than the, sort of the normal pattern there, so I'll just level off there, that will let the speed come down a bit. Yeah, airport's there, good. 
Uh, and then what we'll do is once we're getting close to final, I'll start putting the flaps out. So um, yeah, there's not really too much to uh, to the landing. Uh, I'm gonna just get rid of that, so I've got all of the screen visible. You can see the uh, the white sort of poppy lights there. That's what we where we're going. So um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna sort of talk through it. Then once I turn on final, what I'll probably do is just um, switch on the sound and uh, just shut up and let you enjoy the uh, the approach and landing. And hopefully I can do a good job here and uh, put it down, put it down nice and gently. So I'm going to keep looking towards the the runway because I'm not familiar with this area, so um, so I don't have any sort of. I don't know any visual landmarks to aim for as I'm flying along here. Seems like a little tiny bit high, so I'll just reduce the throttle. I'm also going to put the first stage of flaps out as well. You can see the airport, the, the airplane rather kick up there. Oops. Okay, so yeah, we are a bit high, so I'll start descending now. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to shut up and uh, let the plane do the rest, really. So I uh, hope you enjoy the approach and landing. Damn. Okay. Well, that won't as as bad as well as I could have hoped. So I'm going to do, just going to turn off to the right, uh, just up here.
Okay. So now we're off the runway, we'll turn the landing lights in the soft off, and because it's only taxi lights off as well. Just do this properly. One, two, one, seven, five. Yeah, so um, yeah, that landing went pretty much as well as, as I could have hoped. Um, so I just did a little bit of airport or airplane clean up there. So I was just turning off the strobe lights, the landing, the taxi lights. Um, I just pulled the fuel mixture back as well, just to uh, kind of protect the engine as well on the ground. And I also just pulled bung the uh, the flaps up to uh, get those kind of stored away, basically. Um, so what I'll do is we'll just park up a gate here and then we'll do a final bit of um, clean up and then we'll uh, shut the aircraft down. Um, unfortunately I don't think there's a, a kind of a, a non list that just referred to, to my kind of little handbook there. And then we will get everything squared away. Drive in nice and slowly. I uh, don't think we'll need that jetway for some reason. <laughs> Just slow it down. I'll do there do nicely. Okay, so I'll grab my paper handbook and let's see what steps I need to take to secure the airplane. Uh, come on, come on, come on, where is it? Right, so parking brake is set. Uh, electrical equipment and autopilot off, so I'm just going to turn all my sort of radios pieces off now. Um, I don't know if you can turn the autopilot off in this, um, so I'll just set it to zero. That can go. Uh, ADF can go off there. Turn that radio off, turn that radio off. Um, and I think that's all the electrics. Um, actually we'll turn the nav lights off as well at this point. Flaps are already up, so that's set. Um, yep, yeah, that's everything. So, master switch off. And mixture pull out. And the engine stops. So, throttle's gone to wide all. Um, ignition switch set to off. Beacon light can go come off now as well because the engine stopped, uh, and the master switch can go off, and the control lock can go back in, and then last step, switch the fuel valve to left or right to prevent cross. And that is one long flight completed. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was something um, new and different and interesting for you. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm so boring that uh, you probably <laughs> clicked off the video, but um, as I said, I, I'm, a, I'm on holiday, so I wasn't sort of really sure what to to kind of put up in the meantime while I was away. So uh, hopefully, you found it interesting. Um, normal service will be resumed next week. Um, I'm not sure what video I'm going to do next week, but it will be back to one of my kind of standard tutorial videos. So I hope to see you guys there. Um, if you stuck with me throughout the entire flight, thank you very much. Um, I'd love to hear your comments and see what you thought about it. Um, thank you very much for watching. And I guess I will catch you all later.